because we do see that Duarte is beginning double queen production, and the Bane list has started for Cube Man, so he is going to be putting on some aggression. But again, because he pulled those guys off of gas um, for a little bit, his Bane list is a little bit slower than um, you know the fastest Bane list possible. Uh, we do see that Duarte is making a bunch of Zerglings. He has ten on the way, and Cube Man isn't really going to be do any be able to do anything other than superficial damage to this hatchery. The first set of Zerglings come out, but now six Zerglings on six Zerglings with another eight, okay, so eight on six. It's going to be uh, fairly easy for Dwarder to hold off um, this attack, but really what he needs to do is he needs to drop this, uh, uh, drop a spine crawler right around here, and then maybe even right here if he wants to mine off of this space. If we look at the unit counting station, drones are very, very important in ZVZ. We see Dwarda is ahead by one drone right now, but now there's five Zerglings coming in for the cube, and he's working them just out of sight over here, and there's really nothing that uh, Dwarda has to make to defend against this other than this queen and a spine crawler that is just now making. He's going to need to evacuate these drones ASAP back into the main if he wants to be able to defend, but um, the problem is, is that Cube Man, does he have speed? Those Zerglings are going to have speed very, very soon. Maybe not in time for this attack, though. We'll see when the Cube Man decides to move in. Um, but Dwarda recognizes the danger is nigh, and he's going to be making drones or Zerglings all the time. Uh, Cube Man moves in with just his drones. He's going to try and bait the units back into these uh, Banelings, but now he's just sending these Banelings out um, one at a time, and oh, bad control there from Dwarda. He loses all of his Zerglings to the Banelings. He has a couple Banelings making of his own, but it's not going to be enough. The Spine Crawler pops out, and that might be enough to drive him away, but the problem is, is that um, right now, uh, Cube Man is just, so, Cube Man really miscontrolled his Banelings there, he was able to take out all of the Zerglings, but he lost all of his Banelings there, when he really only needed to blow up one or two, so what that means is now, even though Cube Man has a lot of Zerglings, so does Dwarda, and Dwarda is going to be able to reinforce much, much quicker and harder, I guess, because he has two hatches worth of production versus the one of his opponent, he has Banelings of his own, and we actually see Dwarda just going for a massive counterattack, and I don't think Cube Man saw it, now he recognizes he's passed by all the Zerglings, he's going to run into these reinforcements, and we'll see exactly what he does, Dwarda is just going to ignore it, I think, uh, Dorda is just going to like rely on being able to hold his main with these Zerglings, and it might be, uh, it might work. We see Dorda is now in the main base. Uh, Cube Man is actually pulling all of his units back, but he hasn't um, moved his units into this area, so the Queen is going down. A lot of Zerglings and uh, a lot of drones are dying to Dorda's aggression, and we see that a couple of Banelings are being morphed by Dorda, and the uh, uh, Banelings just pop at the, just the right time, and Dorda is able to take out all of the Zerglings of Cube Man. We now see in supplies Dorda is up 35 to 6, and Cube Man doesn't really have anything. He's going in for a, a last ditch effort into the uh, main of Dorda, but he lost all of his units to the Banelings that he had hidden up on the ramp, and I think this is going to be GG. We see Dorda attacking the drones. Right now, the drone count is 15 to 8. He's making some Banelings in the base, so that means even when these Zerglings pop out, they'll be able to probably uh, be delayed by these Zerglings for long enough to uh, have these Banelings pop out and kill them, and we now see that there are no drones for Cube Man. Dwarda is massing up units here at his main and his side of the map, and so he's going to be able to defend against the inevitable counterattack from his opponent. More Banelings are coming and killing everything. It is now 4 supply to 36. GG from Cube Man. Cactus Shadows High School takes the 1-0 lead in the series. Okay, so um, we're going to move into game number two now uh, between Major Tom from Woods Cross High School and Rumpler from Cactus Shadows. Uh, this is week number one of the High School Star League. I'm Shaytan bringing you coverage. And uh, if you're interested in my cast, check out uh, youtube.com slash shaytan. So for those that aren't familiar with the format, they're um, mimicking uh, what uh, what's the, what are they called? Um, what the Collegiate Star League did, which is they play a best of five between the schools. So they play three one v ones and a two v two, and all of those games are just best of one series. And then if at the end of all of that it is two two. Then it goes to an ace match with uh, whatever players the coordinators want to play playing. Um, otherwise, the first team that gets three wins in the series uh, wins the overall match between them. So uh, here we have uh, 
Rumpler and Major Tom in game number two of this series. It's going to be on IC Cup Test Fug, MLG IC Cup Test Fug, and it's going to be a PVT. Um, so let's get right into the game. So, um, Test Fug is one of the only uh, three-player maps that has ever been used in competitive play. Like, uh, I know there was this one, and then Zelnaga Fortress, I think, in the GSL. And with the three-player maps, you have a bit of a weird situation, because on um, maps with even numbers of players, you can lead to a split map situation where both players have the total number of resources available to them being even. But here, you can't divide the map in half. Um, so, if one player sets up a fairly strong contain on the other player, then they can take two-thirds of the map and really set them up for a nice long-term economic advantage. But that's, you know, that's way off in the late game. We'll see if the players decide to go for that, or if they want to go for um, some sort of a shorter-term game, you know, maybe a uh, strong pressure. Uh, PBT has been developing... Um, rather rapidly recently with the uh, new patch changes that uh, buffed, buffed Protoss and weakened... Uh, or did they buff Protoss? I know they weakened the Ghost DMP. So um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, in terms of the players, we have uh, the blue Terran player, Rumpler, from Cactus Shadows High School, uh, up 1-0 in the series, spawning in the eastern position on this map. And the teal uh, Protoss player, Major Tom, from Woods Cross High School, uh, in the bottom position on this map. Just one second, let me answer question. There we go. Um, so, as I was saying, PVT has uh, really changed a lot. Originally, you know, the matchup was very much Terran goes Bio with some Medivac support, and then the Protoss makes Colossi uh, with uh, a bunch of gateway units to uh, deal with this. And the Terran would respond with Vikings. Slowly, we saw that that shifted. I think the first time that really uh, happened was in Nassel Season 1, Puma and MC. MC was actually starting to go heavy, heavy uh, gateway-based uh, army because gateway units with armor upgrades are very good against Marines and Marauders. And so those Zealots are just able to eat up so much damage that with Zealot Archon and then later Zealot Archon Storm, uh, you can really deal effectively with a strong Terran bio army. Um, and so Terran responded by adding in Ghosts, which was a counter to both the Archon Zealots and the uh, Templar. And eventually, um, that was found, the Ghost EMP was found to be just a little bit too strong, and so they decrease the radius of that. Now we're seeing a lot of changes, really, where t uh, Protoss are beginning to mix in Colossi and High Templar. They're making this really super strong late-game army, but we'll see what the players are deciding to do here. Generally, um, Protoss Terran games tend to favor um, a more macroeconomic one. You don't see um, a lot of one basing, unless, of course, the Terran does decide to go for the ever-popular 1-1-1 one, one, one build. Um, but we'll see with the new Immortal change, the um, increased range that build has become slightly less popular. Uh, Rumpler, at the very least, is not going to be going for all that quick of an expansion. We see he does have the gas, and interestingly enough, Major uh, Tom did a gas steal here on the Assimilator, so I think he would, might be worried about a 1-1-1, and uh, if I was Rumpler, I might even consider just taking you guys off of gas and doing a slightly delayed extension. But uh, over on Major Tom's face, we do see he's setting up this nice little... Uh, Sim City around his uh, mineral line. Maybe he's worried about a uh, Hellion run by, which is always something to worry about. I know I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, I'm scared about that. But uh, we see that uh, Rumpler is beginning to take down the Assimilator, so he obviously wants it for something. And uh, there's a reactor going down on the barracks. Very, very early reactor, which is interesting. If you're going for the one 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 build, what you generally do is uh, you get about four Marines, I think, as standard. Then you add on the reactor. Uh, just because things line up pretty well there, but we do see that uh, Rumpler is letting his minerals mine up. Like, all of his resources actually get pretty high without making anything. Uh, are you going to be making a factory or expanding? We'll see what he decides to do. There are more Marines on the way, and we see Rumpler is just not really managing his money all that well. Uh, over on Major Tom's side, we see that... Uh, what is he doing? So he has the one gas he is probably going to be going for in Nexus, and we can see him dropping his pylon over there uh, out into the um, natural expansion, which is really something you want to do. So when it pops up, you can begin to reinforce with some... Uh, units warped in over here. Uh, but Rumpler has decided that he is going to expand. The problem is, is now he has all of this gas built up. He has 230 gas and he doesn't even have a factory. He has really no, he has literally no way to use that gas. He has nothing that he can make um, that requires gas. So I'm not really sure what he's going to be doing here. 
His build just isn't that crisply timed out, but um, maybe he's planning on, you know, dropping multiple factories down at once, and now we see another barrack. So I think um, this might be a case where, you know, players, they do something just because it's what is done. And so you see, you know, someone takes a gas, and you think, I need gas. Like, I'm going to need gas. And then you forget, or you make the reactor, but then you forget to take guys off of gas. And so now there's this really big gas surplus. But over on Major Tom's side of things, we see the Nexus is going down. So it looks like a one-gate fast expand. We see him getting another two gateways out right now. And uh, really, that's going to have him uh, be safe against anything that his opponent throws out on him. He should be moving around a little bit more with these units out in the middle of the map just because uh, Stalkers can kite Marines almost indefinitely. So if you start engaging them out here, you can do significant damage to them by the time they actually reach your expansion. Um, there should also be another gas going down soon because Protoss units are just so gas intensive. You really want to get those sentries out there eventually. But uh, we'll see how the game develops. We do finally see some gas being used by Rumpler. He's getting the tech lab on his second barracks with a third barracks on the way. Um, so really, maybe, I, I think what might happen is we could see something like double tech lab production with a stim and combat shield being made as soon as this concussive shell is being done, and then maybe all of that gas would be able to be used. And now we see actually another refinery going down with the factory. So not the crispest of builds, but, you know, we'll see how the game develops. This, the, these aren't pro players, right? Like, these are high school students that have you know, high school things to do. They have class, they have homework to deal with, so don't expect these players to be playing like the Koreans, although if they did, that would be pretty damn cool. Um, the expansion is up for both players right now. In terms of Harvesters, it is even 27 to 27. Uh, Major Tom really doesn't want to be in that situation. With Chrono Boost, you want to be um, slightly ahead of your uh, opponent on Harvesters, uh, if you can, against the Terran especially. And uh, interestingly enough, we see that Major Tom is still only on one gas. He has four gateways and a robo with a robotics bay going up, so he needs to be taking these uh, simulators very, very soon, as Colossi are pretty expensive in the gas department. Um, but we'll see when he decides to do that. Uh, over on Rumpler's side, the factory is down, but there's no starport going down yet. I think the reactor is going down, so probably a starport will be falling, as well as an engineering bay that isn't upgrading anything. Stim has began, has begun being researched, and Combat Shield is probably on the way shortly afterwards. And here is that starport. So both players are really just developing into a longer game. If we look at both players' vision, no one really is uh, aware, all that aware of what's going on in each other's bases, uh, but Major Tom is going to have an observer coming out fairly soon that'll let him know. But uh, Rumpler is actually now moving out with a little bit of an army. It's going to have concussive shells, but uh, nothing else, and uh, we'll see if this is effective. Over on Major Tom's side, he's very zealot heavy. He has only one sentry with three force fields, and I don't know if that'll be enough to let him do any damage here. We can see Rumpler just being able to kite very effectively. Zealots are going to be able to do a little bit of damage, but they don't have any armor upgrades, so they're not all that powerful. There's a bit of a warp in from Major Tom with five more stalkers, and that'll drive Rumpler out. I think he could have done a bit more damage, maybe tried to snipe off this sentry, or at least force some force fields and another guardian shield, but you know, to each their own. Uh, we do see plus one getting started for Rumpler, as well as an additional barracks, so just keeping up that macro. Um, actually, he's, he's doing very well at spending his money. He's just sort of misproportioning how much gas he thinks he needs. He's adding on this third refinery, but really, he has 400 gas. He doesn't need to spend anywhere, but we finally do see Major Tom has taken all of his assimilators and he's beginning Colossi production. Uh, the Robo Bay is not researching Thermal Lance yet, but that'll probably be on the way soon. And these players are actually very even in supply. We do see that Major Tom has finally taken the the lead in uh, Harvesters 47 to 41, and Rumpler is trying to get this Observer. He was chasing it. Maybe he didn't have the... Uh, didn't, oh, yeah, I guess he just didn't have the uh, energy for a scan. And we do see a third command center being uh, dropped down by Rumpler. This is always really nice to see, is that, you know, you don't want to lock yourself into a situation where your one attack has to win or has to fail, unless you're specifically aiming to go for, it, like, a really, really strong timing attack to end the game. And so dropping this command center, it's really a backup, right? Like, he says, okay, I'm going to, maybe I might try and do some pressure, but I don't want to be... Um, I don't want to be left high and dry if that doesn't work, so I'm going to have this command center backing it up, so I'll have an economy um, to deal with it if I can. Uh, one thing Rumpler and both players really should do is, Test Dog is a bit unique in that the watchtowers, other than, isn't there one in the middle? Other than this one in the middle, are hidden behind or under destructible debris. So taking those out, you know, your marines, your units aren't doing anything. Take it out, it'll put some use to them. We do see that Major Tom is really just going for the old school um 
Protoss Army, he's getting Colossi, he has one out, another on the way, but he's not getting Thermal Lens, he really should start upgrading that soon, but we also see him mixing in a little bit of the flavor from the old, uh, from the new style, which is these double forges upgrading, we see that Rumpler is actually going to drop some, uh, do a drop here in the main, and Major Tom is a bit slow to respond. We'll see what he can get. He does warp in some Zealous, but they're going to be killed almost instantly. If he can get these forges, that's going to be 